everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a 4D graveyard. So it's got a little grave marker gravestone on top and then you lift it up and really it doesn't even look like it should lift up. There's some flocking powder around it on the grass that really masks that there's any separate elements to it. So you lift that part up and then there's a little ghost that's hiding underneath. It is so cute. It's actually, considering how it looks, it seems like it would be far more difficult than it is. I hope you guys love it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye. We are going to begin with an overlay of a dark green color acrylic. My camera decided not to record that whole thing, so you only get to see a pinch of it. But then after that's done, we're going to apply an overlay of clear acrylic over the top of the dark green just to make sure it is nice and strong. Don't be afraid to build up an even more significant apex than you may normally. You want a nice little bit of height right in the center of this nail. So now we're going to file this into shape with our e-file. Again, don't be afraid to build up and leave that height right in the middle of the nail. We need to have that. So now I'm going to take it's an inverted backfill bit and we're going to be carving out a rectangle in the center of the nail if you are doing this and it's on an actual human do not do this this would create heat spikes like no other you're going to want to leave this area without sculpting it so when you're doing your overlay you're going to want to just leave this area blank which i actually think is more difficult trying to prevent the acrylic from going there i'm fairly efficient with my e-file so i found carving the hole was easier than leaving the hole if you will so now we're going to glue a magnet on either side of our grave so you're going to have one magnet on each side just press those down and hold. If you are looking for magnets, I do want to just point out that I do have them available on my online store. So if you are interested, you can check them out there. Um, otherwise, we can proceed. So we've got our two magnets glued down. Not easy um, <laughs> when your nail glue doesn't want to work, but usually it's really not that bad. But we're going to then just be securing those magnets in place with more of the dark green acrylic. So when you're doing this little bit of dark green acrylic going around, you're also working on building up more height to your grave. Really the amount of height you need is, it doesn't have to be that much, but what you want to keep in mind with it is that it has to have enough height that it can comfortably close without overly squishing your ghosty. So depending on how big you want your ghost to be will depend on how big you need your grave to be because he has to live in there. So he has to have, you know, plenty of space, two bedrooms, one and a half baths, you know, all that great stuff. So we're going to fill in around those magnets making sure that they aren't going anywhere and also building up the side of the grave. And if you want to, you can, you know, refile out the grave if if you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. It's going to be filled in with black paint anyway, and you'll never see it if it looks a little uneven in there. So don't worry about that. After that's done and fully cured, we're going to be wrapping the nail tightly with some aluminum foil. After you have it pretty much smoothed on nicely, place two magnets on top of the ones that are already in the nail. So it goes nail, aluminum foil, magnets, and then take some more of your dark green acrylic and you're going to be sculpting a little cap that's going to go over the nail and over the hole. So you can kind of tell where the hole is with the aluminum foil because it'll dip in. And you just want to sculpt this next piece. It can kind of fade out. It doesn't have to be even or perfect or anything because it's pretty much going to be invisible. But you do need to have this piece sculpted. And once that is fully cured, you're going to peel away the aluminum foil. Now we get to sculpt our grave marker on a nail form backing with gray acrylic. The great thing with sculpting a grave marker or a gravestone or whatever you'd like to call it is that there are so many different iconic shapes. So I was, it took so much thought process trying to decide on which style of grave marker I wanted to make because there are, you know, your basic rectangular. There are some that at least in the cartoon realm look more like a trapezoid where they're wider at the top and they kind of taper down and get more narrow. There is this slightly more ornamental design where it's like a rectangle on the bottom with a half circle on top. There are even, um, there's a lot of them that have a cross on the top of them or there's just so many different options here. So if you were doing this on a set and you had, you know, multiple, you know, multiple little grave markers, switch it up, have fun with it. Do, do a bunch of different patterns. Don't just try to do the same one over and over again. So we're going to sculpt the first little basic shape of our gravestone. And then we're going to go through and add just a little bit of an edge around it. Like it was carved in just around the middle. So this next nice little little outline essentially around the top side don't do around the very bottom of your grave marker because that's going to be where it is stuck down to the grass but just go around everything else and as you are working on this, use thin bits of acrylic and do piece by piece. When you're trying to sculpt these skinny little lines, you don't want to try to do too much at once or your acrylic will set up before you have a chance to arrange it. And 
it'll just go a little better for you. So now we're going to repeat the process on the back side. We're going to start out with another smooth layer of acrylic over the whole thing. And then after that has set up just enough to do this, we're going to be working on that little outline going around the whole thing. I am using a 3D acrylic monomer, so my acrylic sets up extremely quickly, which I personally prefer for sculpting 3D work. And so I don't really have to wait too long between doing different layers. Now we're going to file this just a little bit to smooth out the top sides so that they don't look like it's all a bunch of different layers, but it looks like it's one solid piece of stone. And then once you have that done, then we get to have the fun of attaching this together and you get to really see how it's gonna work. So we're going to glue that little gravestone on top of that green piece that goes on top of the nail. So think of it, I call it a grassy cover, off the grassy cover. So we're just going to glue that down, hold it in place till the, the glue seems like it isn't gonna go anywhere. Once that is the case, then you're going to secure the grave marker down to your grassy cover. So use initially some more of your gray acrylic just to fill in any gaps around it. You're sculpting something fairly flat on top of something that is rounded so there is going to be a little bit of a just a little gap around the whole bottom so just make sure that is filled in nicely it doesn't have to be perfect um, in fact a little bit of decay isn't the worst thing on an old haunted gravesite once that is done then I'm going to go through with just a little bit more of my darker green color and I'm going to add just kind of little bits of unmown grass on the sides just add a little bit of that green coming up you can do as much or as little of this as you like. So it's kind of a, an extra element to add in. So we're going to be doing those. If you wanted to, when you're doing those little bits, other things that you could add if you wanted to detail this further is maybe you could add a bouquet, like somebody just visited the grave and, and they left flowers or you know, whatever you want. There's so many different things that you really could do with this design that would personalize it too. So we're going to just sort of fill in around it. Once we have that done and all of our acrylic sculpting has been completed, we're going to start doing the details on the grave marker with our black acrylic paint. So when you're doing this, again, personalized options galore. You can do, um, you know, RIP is pretty, pretty common. That's what I did. Then you can write initials or a name, whatever you'd like to do here. One thing that would be kind of funny is like if you say, you know, you want to do your ex-husband and give him give him a, an end year or whatever the case may be. You can have fun with this. I personally just did my own initials and completely bogus made up years just so that I wasn't accidentally hexing somebody. So we've got 1812, which I just picked random dates. I was going through, I was like, okay, we're going to do 1812 to, I don't even know what I did, 1916 maybe? Yeah, 1916. Completely, like I said, bogus made up dates. We're going to top coat everything or not 1816. I don't know. What did I do? whatever. Either way, we're going to top coat, apply a layer top coat over the grass. And then after that top coat has been on the grass, you're going to grab some green flocking powder and a tweezers, and you're going to load up the top coat with flocking powder. Really fill it in. You want to press it into the, into the top coat and don't necessarily tap off a whole bunch of the extra or try to brush off extra. Just cure that and let that be. And now fill in the inside of the grave with black gel paint. Make sure you choose a black gel paint that does not require top coat. Otherwise, you'll have to top coat that too. But once that's cured, then you're going to apply your gel top coat over all of the green. And then once again, we're going to flock. So we're going to grab the flocking powder, grab your tweezers, press that into your grassy area. My green flocking powder is much brighter than the green background. So once you end up brushing off the extra powder, when you get to that stage, then you'll find that it kind of shows through. It's got some dark green background, the brighter green powder, and it all looks nice and actually very realistic. Now we're going to grab a little piece of a mailer envelope. So this is a USPS, United States Postal Service mailer envelope. It's a flat rate envelope. They give them away for free. So you can just go get one. It is a waterproof, tear-proof packaging. It, it acts almost like paper. You can just write on it. It is the most magnificent stuff for anything that you want to be paper-like in nails. So grab some of that. Get you one of those because that is the best thing. And I'm sure in other countries they have a similar type product. And I don't know what this stuff is, but it is really quite fantastic. A little bit difficult to cut but you can certainly cut out these little shapes with it. And like I said, you can draw on it. And so it's not going to be harmed by water and it's not going to rip. So once you have your little ghosty, you're going to glue the tail end of the ghosty into the grave. Just put a little bit of gel top coat down and then hold the ghosty flash cure it. Once you have that flash cured, put that into your lamp so that it can fully cure before you move on and you put a little bit of the top coat onto the top of his forehead and then you hold that onto the top of the inside of the lid. So I, yeah, do it from like a side view. Hold the lid down, 
hold your little ghosty and then after that's been flash cured carefully transfer this very you know you know little creation into your lamp and cure that some more you don't want it you want to have enough nail glue on it or a gel top coat that it isn't going to be delicate so just make sure it's fully cured and then you're pretty much good to go your ghosty will just fold right up into his into his grave home and then you can really freak some people out because nobody's gonna think this opens it looks like the only element of this design is the gravestone and then surprise so i hope you guys love this one as much as i do like i said in a couple other videos halloween nails are my favorite due to the fact that you can surprise people with them and that's my favorite thing so i hope you do subscribe if you aren't already to see what other surprises i have in store this month and i'll see you next time. Bye!